A CDC advisory committee will meet today to discuss the risks of heart inflammation in teens who get the Pfizer or Moderna COVID vaccines. The rare condition occurs mostly in teens and men under 30. Over 300 cases have been confirmed so far out of more than 310 million mRNA vaccines administered. 81% of those who were hospitalized with the condition made a full recovery. So Dr. Nita Ogden is an internal medicine specialist and immunologist and is here to talk a little bit more about this. Um, so the board also had a similar meeting to discuss the link between blood clots and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which I guess is a different sort of formulation than the other two vaccines. What might the outcome of today's meeting be? Good morning. Well, yes, today that the panel is meeting to discuss, um, well, it's a small number of cases, as you just pointed out, roughly 323 confirmed cases among uh, over 300 million doses of the vaccine. Um, but it is occurring in younger people, in men, uh, especially under the age of 30. And now that we have teens getting vaccinated and are on the precipice of even younger uh, children getting vaccinated in the fall, uh, less than 12 years of age is expected. Uh, I think that the, you know, the CDC wants to really just put a closer lens on what's going on and, and really have a conversation around uh, risk and relative risk. Uh, essentially, you know, children and unvaccinated children are also at risk of getting uh, myocarditis, which is what they're discussing, the heart inflammation, um, from the coronavirus, um, in addition to many other complications. Uh, so I think that they're they're really needing to uh, flesh this out a bit more. But as you said, uh, this is, you know, a mild presentation and, and most people recover. Um, but as more young people get vaccinated, they do want to pay attention to this. And since it, since it is a public you know, forum, uh, it allows listeners to actually put it in greater context, just as they did with the J&J &J vaccine and the clots. So, you, you, know, you know, Dr. Ogden, of course, the question will be, will this meeting, as you say, it's public, um, will it have an impact on how people feel about COVID vaccines? Because it's really, really difficult um, when you have health officials like yourself, like Dr. Fauci, like others, the COVID-19 advisory board, um, providing this information on an almost regular basis. I mean, that board meets daily and the meeting is broadcast here on CBSN and on other networks for anybody to see. But you also, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about people who are vaccine hesitant, but we haven't really talked about the people who are spreading the misinformation that are making people vaccine hesitant. We've talked a lot about people being unable because of you know financial circumstances um, or the circumstances in where they live. But the reality is when you look at a map right now of the United States, and we've all been reporting that we as a country are not going to meet President Biden's goal of 70% of Americans uh, fully vaccinated by the 4th of July. But you look at the states um, in, in the Northeast and on the West Coast where those states are 70% or above. And then you look at the states that are not, and you have to wonder what is it specifically about what people are hearing in, those, in that part of the country that is leading to the numbers that we're seeing. So how worried are you about that? Yeah, you know, I am worried. And I think that the headline of just this type of meeting, um, rather than people sort of tuning in and delving into what the data and information says they're going to take away, well, I'm not going to give this to my child because of uh, this itis, you know, without even understanding necessarily uh, that it is a mild thing, that it is relatively rare. Um, and I think you're right. We do have to examine where people are getting their information. You know, actually, a new uh, study from the CDC is looking at vaccines hesitancy and people are saying that their reasons are they're worried about the side effects the safety and whether that when they get the vaccine they can then spread it to other people so you can imagine that um, their sources of information are not the ones that you've mentioned that no place does dr Fauci or doctors or experts talk about how you could possibly ever spread the virus by getting the vaccine, but it's out there um, and it's seeding communities that potentially don't have access to as many doctors or information sources. And I really think that's where uh, the administration has to start really making an effort uh, in getting you know, vaccine knowledge out there. Um, these might be rural communities, communities that don't have access to computers or the internet uh, or as many doctors. Um, this is really where we need to turn our lens as we try to get more people vaccinated and uh, really boost that vaccine confidence. 
Yeah, you. I love the idea of this meeting being public because transparency is supposed to be, you know, a great remedy for or to fill. It, it, it should be something that sort of um, fills the void where conspiracy theories um, would would flourish. Um, but we've seen far too often people take a nugget of something that comes from an official source and then sort of bend it and twist it into, uh, you know, whatever kind of uh, theory that they're, they're, they're trying to support. So mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if this is going to actually help us be more informed by being so transparent. Um, I want to ask you about a, another study, a C CDC study that found that younger adults ages 18 to 39 are less likely to be vaccinated. Um, the problem with that is we all also have this new Delta variant that ha that is quickly emerging uh, in this country. It was identified in India first, and Dr. Anthony Fauci called it the greatest threat that this country is facing in terms of getting a handle and getting past the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Can you just talk about the dangers, th th this dangerous combination of particularly younger people uh, not getting vaccinated and the growth of this possibly more contagious strain of the virus? Yeah, well, in fact, you know, it is the most con contagious strain that we've seen, and it is possibly more uh, deadly, leading to more severe cases. We've seen it, how it played out in India, and now we uh, are also seeing in the UK where it's doubling uh, in a matter of two weeks. And they are reporting that those people who are getting uh, in cases of the Delta variant are younger. Um, and they're unvaccinated because, of course, we know a lot of younger people have al also not been uh, approved to get the vaccine. But it is that even that age group of young adults over 18 who are approved to get the vaccine. So um, we are facing, as usual, we've seen this, a race with this virus, which can mutate so quickly. And the most vulnerable um, populations are the unvaccinated. Uh, and, and it's really that's where the coronavirus is going to always have the opportunity to mutate and grow and how we as a globally and in this country will continue to be at risk because of unvaccinated populations. I mean, now youth are really, um, that's like this cornerstone that's going to lead to potentially more variants because they're the ones that are most likely to get it because they are unvaccinated. And the study from the CDC, in fact, showed that, that, it, you know, uh, among adults who've gotten vaccinated, a large percentage of them are over age 65. Um, there's still vaccine hesitancy in the young adult age group uh, between like 18 and 39 for a number of reasons, but they are pointing to certain populations, low-income populations, young men, um, rural areas, like I mentioned before, places with uh, less access to doctors and computers and the internet. So uh, this is going to, again, like I said, require the administration to have more of a grassroots effort, more uh, mobile and uh, pop-up clinics, uh, getting into trusted uh, businesses, uh, really reaching out to, for example, pediatricians or the doctors who uh, these people might see, especially children, before going back to school, having that conversation. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Have you gotten vaccinated? Vaccinated. Um, these are very personal steps that are going to have to be taken on a sort of one-to-one -one level uh, to break into this this age group. So, Dr. Ogden, before we let you go, um, you know, I don't know if you saw, there was a picture yesterday, I believe it was from yesterday, uh, showing Dr. Joe Biden um, in the state of Tennessee, I believe, holding the hand of a young man who was getting his vaccine. He was afraid to get the vaccine, and uh, the, the first lady was there um, to try and increase people's um, awareness of why it's important to, to receive the vaccine. And you mentioned the UK and the Delta variant, and Omar Villafranca is going to have a, a piece on that uh, following our discussion. But it's interesting to me that in France, for example, um, the incidents are down. There are fewer people in hospitals. Um, the death rate is getting lower. There is no vaccine hesitancy in France, at least not in the way that it is here in the United States, where they are seeing an increase. They are seeing an almost 7% new number of cases from the Delta variant. Um, in the Paris area, according to French media, that's jumped from 4% to 9.6% in just the last few days. But if that population is vaccinated, and here in the United States, we are not vaccinated, what are your concerns briefly in just 30 seconds? What, what can you tell us about what's coming? 
Uh, I'm concerned that we're going to, you know, see surges again. And now we're not just looking at, you know, we have to get away from just the, the wide lens view of the United States and really think of like counties and pockets of the United States where people are not vaccinated. For example, Missouri, where there's a low vaccination rate, they're seeing surges six times uh, hospitalization rates from the Delta variant compared to last week. I'm worried about how this will change uh, in the fall when it gets cooler and we're back to school and we have a mixing of, you know, people who are students who are vaccinated versus unvaccinated. What is that going to look like? Because uh, as long as we see these surges this summer, it means that the Delta variant will continue to spread. And as we move into the cooler months of the fall, it's going to continue to be a problem. All right, Dr. Nita Ogden with some stark warnings for us. Thank you very much, doctor, as always. Thanks.